Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the trigonometric functions and their graphs. So we're going to study the unit circle, consider x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. That's our unit circle. We know from our trigonometry that if we draw a tangent line, and that point starts at 1, 0, there's the y-axis. We call this the theta axis, and what we do is we measure out a length of theta, and if we wrap that arc around the unit circle, so we would do that wrapping over there, that's going to correspond to my wrapping function at theta, right? And what do we know? We know there's a configuration over here. That wrapping function at theta has a corresponding x value and has a corresponding y value. So in other words, w of theta, the wrapping function of theta, is an x and a y. And we call this xy point, the cosine of theta, the x coordinate is called the cosine of theta, and the y coordinate is called the sine of theta. Now it's important to realize that when we do this wrapping, what happens? When we do this wrapping around, once theta gets past 2 pi, so once, once theta bigger than 2 pi, you start to rewrap. Again. And what that implies is that implies that these functions, sine of theta and cosine of theta, are 2 pi periodic. In other words, that says that the sine of theta plus 2 pi is the sine of theta, and the cosine of theta plus 2 pi is the cosine of theta. So what we need to do, if we're going to graph these functions, we just need to graph them on an interval of length 2 pi to get the entire behavior of sine and cosine. So we only need to graph on the interval 0 to 2 pi, and then we what? And then we repeat. And that's great. So let's try to get a sense of what the graph of sine and cosine look like. So let's think of what's happening with sine, for example. So if I want to plot the graph of sine of theta, here's the theta axis, and then here's the sine of theta axis, okay? So what's going to happen over here? Well, what's the, the sine of theta is the y. So let's think of what's happening with the y. Over here, the y starts at 0, then the y starts to increase from 0 all the way up to 1. So from 0 to pi over 2, so that's pi over 2, that's going to be the point pi, that'll be 3 pi over 2, and that will be 2 pi. So sine is going to start at 0 and go all the way up to the value of 1. So there's a value of 1 up there, so that's my graph of sine so far. And then what happens then, the y value starts to go from 1 all the way down, and then the y goes all the way down. The y value at this point is 0. So when you hit the pi, the y value goes to 0. Okay? And then the y value becomes negative and goes all the way down to negative 1. So then we go down to negative 1 at what? At a total of 3 pi over 2. So then we go down to negative 1. So that's going to be a value of negative 1. Like that. And then finally, when I go back up to 2 pi, it goes back up to the value of 0. There's no y value there. So we get this version of sine. And we've drawn one full period of sine. So if I want to keep graphing sine, what would I do? I would just keep the exact same behavior going for what? Forever in the forward direction, forever in the what? In the backward direction. So this is the graph of y equals the sine of theta. Now let's try to draw the same thing for cosine, right? So what's the graph of cosine going to look like? So let's do it. So for cosine, we're going to do the same thing. There's the cosine of theta axis, and there's the theta axis. We're going to consider the same points, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Let's see what happens. Now remember, the cosine is the x value. So the x value at 0 starts at 1, the x value starts at 1 and then goes to 0. So I'm going to start over here at the height of 1. There's 1 and there's negative 1. So I start at a height of 1 and I go to 0. And then the x value goes from what? It goes from 0 all the way down to negative 1. So I'm going to go from 0 down to what? Down to negative 1. 
And then from negative one, the x value is going to get all the way back close to zero point. So it's going to go back up to zero. And then the x value returns to a value of one. So then the x value returns to a value of one. And so this over here is the graph of cosine of theta. So in other words, it looks almost exactly the same as sine. It's just what? It's just shifted over from each other because they're sine and cosine are co-functions of each other. And if I want to continue the graph of cosine, I would just repeat this same pattern forever over here as well. And so the main ingredient of these proofs over here is that once you have the sine and cosine plotted for an interval of length 2 pi, you'll just take that picture, and if you were on a tablet, you would just take that picture, copy it, paste it, copy it, paste it, copy it, paste it, forward and backwards, and you get the entire graph of sine and cosine this way, which stems from the fact that they're periodic, and that also comes from the whole idea that to define sine and cosine, you wrap an interval of length theta around the unit circle and figure out where you end, and that is the definition of sine of theta and cosine of theta. Thank you very much.